wonderful God, a majestic God, a way maker. It's a wonderful thing to see uh, what God has been doing. At the end of this service, um, we have uh, what we usually, what we call our, our missions offering, where you'll be given an opportunity to uh, sow into the ministry um, of Bethel Gospel Tabernacle and see what God is doing. Um, but during that particular time in, in the service, uh, you'll have an opportunity to um, give to both uh, uh, the Haiti uh, mission that's going on and also to 100 suits um, so just be prayerful in that um, and then also our, our brother Kevin Livingston will be available uh, to speak across the street about those that are interested in uh, what he's doing but also interested in uh, community development community organizing um, he has a, a passion and a heart for that and would love to share any type of uh, wisdom that he's experienced in his journey. So if you'd uh, like to speak with him, you can meet him across the street in the BCMC uh, after the service. Um, another thing I'd like to share is that uh, I really encourage you to come out on Thanksgiving Eve, uh, that service, Wednesday night. We're with Calvary Baptist Church right across the street. They will be here. Uh, so please come out. Please show a strong support. Uh, it's right before Thanksgiving, um, the night before, so come out, enjoy fellowship together. Uh, the Bible talks about how good it is when brothers dwell together in unity, and so it's good to uh, be unified as, as churches, even though, you know, you know, right across the street, might, might as well uh, hang out together, fellowship together, worship together, and it's something that we do yearly, so uh, I encourage you to come out to that. And also, for the men that are present, men that are here, man, can I hear you say amen? Amen. All right, all right. Um, we have our husband's class and we have our uh, singles uh, uh, classes as well. And I would encourage you, um, uh, men, whether you, whatever, wherever you find yourself as a, as a man, whether you're a married man or whether you are single yourself, um, to take advantage of the classes that we have and be iron sharpening iron and be brothers dwelling together in unity, uh, not to just uh, uh, come uh, walls up, but come well, ready, willing, and expectant to discuss, to talk, um, but also just to hear about someone that's been where you are, uh, someone that is where you are, and it's good to fellowship and understand that you're not in this uh, uh, alone. Um, so we're just very encouraged and very grateful that we have the uh, uh, capacity to have those courses, and it, I encourage you all to take advantage of those. Amen? Amen. Oh, that amen was weak compared to that first one. Can I get an amen? amen. All right, cool, cool, cool. Um, all right, so let's, talk, let's go right to the text. Uh, from the book of Luke chapter 5 verse 18 the ushers are handing out, out Bibles if you have them um, Luke chapter 5 starting at verse 18 thank you Lord when you have it say amen all right on one of those days as he was teaching, Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting there and who had come from every village of Galilee and Judea and from Jerusalem and the power of the Lord was with him to heal. And behold, some men were bringing on, bringing on a bed a man who was paralyzed and they were seeking to bring him in and lay him before Jesus. But finding no way to bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and let him down with his bed through the tiles into the midst before Jesus. And when he saw their faith, he said, man, your sins are forgiven you. And the, and the scribes and the Pharisees began to question saying, who is this who speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? When Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered them, Why do you question in your hearts? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, Rise and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the man who was paralyzed, I say to you, Rise up, pick up your bed, and go home. And immediately he rose up before them and picked up what he had been lying on and went home glorifying God. And amazement seized them all and they glorified God and were filled with awe saying, we have seen extraordinary things today. 
Dear God, I thank you so much for your word, which is true. I thank you so much for your word, which has power. I thank you so much, Father, for who you are in each of our lives, for who you've been to us on our journeys in this sanctuary, on our journeys to this place, in this pew, at this hour. I pray right now that as I speak, oh God, you would be seen, you would be heard, you would be felt, and you would do what only you can do through your word, that you would meet your people. And we won't fail to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory, for we ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. We've been focused on our, our Waymaker series. We've been looking at how God has been a Waymaker in our lives. When uh, the enemy throws up dead ends, God says, no, 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 that's not a dead end. I got you. I'm going to clear this path for you. When the enemy tries to shut doors in our lives, God says, no, 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 I'm going to open that door for you. I'm going to rain favor down upon you. We took a look at uh, uh, Jesus uh, in John chapter 14 when he says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No man comes to the father but through me it's a beautiful thing he's speaking to his disciples and he says look i'm going to prepare a place for you in my father's house are many mansions i'm going to get it set up for you and the disciples say how will we know to get there and he says you already know the way to get there and they say we do and he says yes you do it's me i am the way i am the truth i am the life and when i say i'm going to prepare a place it doesn't mean i'm going to fluff your pillows it doesn't mean i'm going to make your beds it doesn't mean i'm going to leave you little mints when you enter in like room service it means i'm going to prepare a place that level of preparation means that i will take whips upon my back that i will take nails upon my hands nails in my feet and a crown of thorns on my head i will breathe my last i will give up the ghost i will die on calvary's cross for your sins that is what is what preparation looks like jesus says i will die for you and that in that i will prepare a place for you and in that we see that jesus is the way jesus is the truth jesus is the life he is the way that's what we looked at uh, two weeks ago then last week we looked at exodus chapter 13 and how god told uh, moses to deliver the the israelites out of egypt and pharaoh has some struggle but the 10 plagues hit and then god the pharaoh says let them pharaoh lets them go and on their way out we see that the text in exodus 13 lets us know that god could have taken israel a quicker way but it would have gone uh, uh, it would have been a route that would have exposed them to some things that would have driven them back to Egypt. So instead, what God said was, I'm going to take them the long way around. I'm going to take them the long way through. And in going the long route, they got to know God better. And sometimes in our lives, we have questions like, God, why can't I just do this? It's so easy. Why can't I just do this? It's so quick. But God knows if we go that route, our hearts can be corrupted. If we go that quick and easy route, our hearts could be led astray. If we go that quick and easy route, it could drive us back to the very thing that God delivered us from. So sometimes he takes us the long route, the more difficult route, but in that route, it shows us his character. It shows us his nature. In that route, God was what? A pillar of fire by night and a cloud over them by day. God was what they needed. He was not only their way out, but he was their way through, their way in the midst of their situation, their way in the midst of what they were going through. And in some of our situations, we need a way in, we need a way through, and God says, I'll be that way. My grace is sufficient. It's sufficient in your time of need to keep you in what you're going through. The 23rd Psalm says what? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. God is with you in your steps. He's with you in your struggles. He's with you. If you need a way through, God is that way. And so today, I want to look at the fact that how God makes a way isn't something that we can always fully understand. We pray God make a way, God deliver, God set free, God do this for me, God please, please, please. But how God makes a way is not something that we can immediately comprehend. And that's what I'd like for us to look at today. In verse 17, it says, one of those days, Jesus was teaching Pharisees and teachers of the law. They were all sitting there who had come from every village in Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was on him to heal. Now, it's interesting because Jesus is teaching and he's not just teaching uh, everyday uh, people that do not have a knowledge of the word. He's teaching Pharisees. He's teaching teachers of the law. He's teaching people that know this and they are sitting at his feet listening to his teaching. Now, this is nothing new because if you read scripture, you would remember the, 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 the fact that Jesus, when he was 12, 
his parents got him got lost his parents lost him and they had to turn back and say where's Jesus where's Jesus they searched everywhere and they finally find him in the temple teaching and teaching to those religious leaders and they're amazed at the words that are coming from his mouth. So from 12 to he's anywhere in between 30 and 33. At this point, we see that he's only grown in his teaching. And those that teach are still amazed at his words that's coming out of his mouth. The authority that he's teaching with. Because he knows who he is and he knows what his mission is. It's a dangerous thing to know who you are, but also your purpose and why the Lord placed you here. Because it gives you focus, it gives you the ability to speak with clarity, and it gives you the conviction to not stray from what the Lord has told you. And we see Jesus knows what his mission is. He knows who he is. He's speaking. And the author lets us know, the author of this text lets us know that the religious leaders of the day are present. They're present and they're listening. This is important because it comes into play later. But the author also lets us know that the power of the Lord was on Jesus to heal. That Jesus had the power to heal. And that also lets us know that, the, that God can move in certain ways for certain purposes, for certain reasons. And sometimes we'll be praying for something and in a specific season, the spirit of the Lord is on, this, this, in, on Jesus in this moment to heal. God desires to do things in his timing for his purposes. In the book of Luke uh, chapter 8, we see the woman with the issue of blood reaching to touch the hem of Jesus' garment. She's been suffering for years and years and years. And she says to herself, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, then I'll be healed. She touches the hem of his garment and he stops short in his tracks and he looks around and says, who touched me? Who touched me? The disciples look at him like they're crazy. They say, Jesus, you're around so many people. Of course, someone's touched you. He says, no, something is different because I felt power flow from me. I have power for a specific reason, and this power to heal was flown from me. And now we see here that power is on Jesus to heal again. And it's a setup for something that's to come later in the text. In verse 18, it says, Behold, some men were bringing on a bed a man who was paralyzed, and they were seeking to bring him in and lay him before Jesus. This lets us know that they knew that Jesus could do something for this man that they could not do. That Jesus, even though he was known as a teacher, was also known as a miracle worker. And these people knew that their friend, their paralyzed friend, needed a miracle. The wonderful thing about this man is he had his friends that were dedicated to carrying him. He could not move on his own, so his friends were carrying him. But they found no way to bring him in, the text says. That means they tried to enter this way. They tried to go around this way. They tried to, to do it, but because of the crowd... They could not do it. So as a result, they went up on the roof and then they went, they, they cut up, they put him down through the tiles. Mark chapter two, another account of this says, many were gathered together so that there was no more room, even at the door. And he was preaching the word to them. The amazing thing about this portion of text is that it lets us know that it, they were crowded. There were so many people crowded around, so many people crowded around. Why? Because of the word of Jesus. Because of what he was saying, because of the authority that he carried when he spoke, there was no room even to get in the building. Not just, oh, Jesus, heal me. Not just, oh, Jesus, heal me. Jesus, do this. Jesus, do that. No, no, God, what do you have to say? I'm hungry for your word. And so as a result of them being hungry for the word that was coming out of Jesus's mouth, they said, let's let's be here. And they they packed this place out. And these friends are willing to go above and beyond for this man who is paralyzed. They are willing to go the extra mile and make a way for him to get close to Jesus. They tried to enter through the door. They said, no, no, no. They maybe looked and peeked through a window to see if they can make it through there. No, no, no. There's no space there. They tried to maybe go through the back door and no, there, there, there's, no there's nothing there. I can't make it through. So they said, let, 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 let's try the roof. Let's try and lower him in through the roof. There was no way in, so they made a way in. There was no way in, so they said, okay, let's make a way in. Let's make this happen. They were, they were desperate. They were desperate. They were persistent and desperate. They were committed and desperate. They were strategic and desperate. They were uh, desperate, desperate for change in their friend's life. And this shows me that desperation is a key ingredient in the recipe for breakthrough. 
It's a key ingredient in the recipe for breakthrough. If you want change, if you want things to shift, if you want God to, to move, if you want something miraculous to happen, you have to get desperate. You have to get desperate. You have to try something that no one's tried before. You have to do something that has not been done before. You have to take that box and think outside of it. Think outside the box in order for God to move. You have to get desperate. They wanted a change in the life of their friend and desperation is a key ingredient in the recipe for breakthrough but what about us are we desperate for change we say we want God to make a way but are we willing to put the work in we say we want God to make a way but have we reached that point where we're willing to press through each and every obstacle in order for that way to be made how desperate are we this shows us also that this man had some incredible friends because he was paralyzed he was paralyzed, which means this is a day and age before wheelchairs, before motorized wheelchairs. He was paralyzed, which means that he was dependent upon the mercy of others to move. He was dependent upon the mercy of others to move. Think about his, these friends. Do we have people in our lives that will go above and beyond for us and do what needs to be done in prayer? And do what needs to be done in fasting and do what needs to be done and intercede on our behalf so we can get our breakthrough. This man was paralyzed. He was unable to move. And this is in the physical. But some of us and some of us know people, some of us in here and some of us know people out there that are paralyzed emotionally, that are paralyzed spiritually. And are we going to be the people for those people that go to battle for them, that go to war for them to say, look, I'm going to pray. I'm going to intercede. I'm going to storm heaven to get you to move. I'm going to speak with you. I'm going to be that shoulder to lean on. I'm going to help you out in your financial hardship. I'm going to do what I can do because I know that I'm blessed to be a blessing. And as a result of that, I am going to get you as close as I can to the feet of this way maker. God is calling his people. He's calling his people to know that he is the way. He's calling his people that know that he's the truth. He's calling his people that know that he's the life to bring those that are paralyzed and need assistance before him. To bring those that need assistance before him through prayer, through intercession, through financially trying to assist them to help them get out of their situation and break free from their paralysis. We're blessed and the Lord has called some of us to be an answer to the prayers of someone else. Some of us are praying for God to make a way, make a way, make a way. What if that way God wants to make is through you? Be prayerful about it. But it is, it is a reality because this man was paralyzed. He would not have gotten to the feet of Jesus had he not been helped, had he not been assisted. And many people are in life stuck, paralyzed, waiting for someone like you, someone that has what you have, someone that has the gift of God that you carry to come and speak a word over them that is equivalent to you taking them before the throne room so God can do what God can do. Watch what it says in verse 20. It says that when God saw their faith, he said, man, your sins are forgiven you. When God saw their faith, he said, man, your sins are forgiven you. Not when God saw only the faith of the man that was paralyzed, but when God saw the faith of his friends that carried him down. So it was a group effort of faith. Yes, the man that was paralyzed had to have faith, but the faith of the, the friends is what got the man through and got his sins to be forgiven. It was the faith of the friends, the faith of the friends. So who do you have around you? Do you have people that are interceding on your behalf? And are you one of those people for someone else? Faith without works is dead. He saw their faith and said, man, your sins are forgiven you. Jesus didn't see uh, them say anything to him. He saw their faith. He saw their works. He saw their actions because it says in the text that what? In Mark chapter 2, another parallel account, it says, when they could not get near him because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him. And when they had made the opening, they let down the paralytic on which uh, they let down the bed on which the paralytic lay. So there wasn't just a giant hole in the roof. They had to roll up their sleeves and get to work. 
They said, look, we love you. We're friends with you and, and we want to see you healed. Well, are you willing to remove this roof so I can get my deliverance? Are you willing to put in the work so that I can get my deliverance? Are you willing to put in work for me and walk with me and struggle with me so that I can be healed and be whole and help me bear my burdens? Or are you going to just say it? Oh, I'm praying for you. I got you. Don't worry about it. Where's the action? Jesus saw their faith. Their faith was seen by what? Their actions. Why? Because faith without works is dead. It's dead. James chapter, uh, 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 James, two, James 2 says that. Faith without works is dead. Just as the body apart from the spirit is dead, so is faith without works. So they put Jesus down. They put this man down before Jesus. They lower him down and everyone stops right in the middle of Jesus' teaching. Right in the middle of his sermon. Right in the middle of his third point. Boom. You hear the, the, the things go off the roof and they're lowering him down and, and he's looking. Everyone's looking. He's looking. He's looking. And he lands right at Jesus' feet. Jesus sees this. Sees their faith. Turns to this man on his bed of paralysis and says, your sins are forgiven. Now imagine his confusion. Because I doubt that they broke the, 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 the roof off and lowered him down to hear your sins are forgiven. I'm pretty sure they broke it down and lowered him down to hear you're healed, get up and walk. But instead they hear your sins are forgiven. And the man says, well, I'm still paralyzed. Like, what's up? <laughs> Imagine their confusion, but the man says, you know, Jesus, I still can't move. But the wonderful thing about Jesus is that everything with him is a teaching moment. And sometimes he'll put us in situations to teach us something about him and teach us something about ourselves. And he said, your sins are forgiven to teach those religious leaders that were in the atmosphere, that were in the, the room to teach them something about himself. He says, your sins are forgiven. And the Pharisees began to question in verse 21. They said, who is this that blasphemes? Who can forgive sins? But God alone, only God can do this. Only God can do this. Only God can do this. But Jesus said, what? I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one can come to the father except through me it is through me that this can happen and Jesus perceived their thoughts and says why, why do you question in your hearts which is easier to say your sins are forgiven or to say rise and walk so the Pharisees don't see the way they don't see who God is they don't see Jesus as God standing right before them in the flesh and they're confused they're saying only a, a sacrifice can can be a, 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 a adequate substitute for forgiving of sins and Jesus says I'm going to be that sacrifice so I speak it out your sins are forgiven your sins are forgiven I'm going to make a way Way to bring him close to the father your sins are forgiven and they say how can you do this and he says just so you know that I have the authority to do this just so you know that I have authority here on earth I'm the son of man I know you don't expect to see God in human form but here I am and I'm about to change some things so you know that I have authority I say to you rise up pick up your mat and go home and the man gets up, he gets up, he picks up his mat that he was laying on and he goes home, glorifying God, glorifying God. And in amazement, amazement sees them all and they all glorified God together. And they were filled with awe saying, we have seen extraordinary things today. As the band comes up, Jesus says, I want you to know that I have authority. I want you to know that I am the God that can do this thing. This thing that you're doubting, this thing that you say I have no place doing, I want to let you know that I, I have the authority to do it. So as a result of me wanting to let you know I have authority, rise up and walk. Rise up and walk. Rise up and walk. And he gets up and he walks. I want you to know, saints of God, that whatever you're going through today, God has the ultimate, 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 ultimate authority. Authority to speak over your situation. Authority to reserve, reverse your situation. Authority to make all things new. Authority to do what only he can do in your situation. Authority, authority. He has the final, 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 final say.
Our God has all authority. He doesn't ask for permission. He doesn't wait on anybody else's time but his own. He is God and he has authority. So he says, just so you know, get up and walk. And watch how this man gets up and walk. He gets up and he walks glorifying God. And in his glorifying God, in his saying hallelujah to the Lord, in him magnifying the name of the true and living God, in this, all amazement seized all these people that were there and they all glorified God. And they were filled with awe. They said, we have seen extraordinary things today. God not only forgave this man's sin, but this man that was paralyzed got up and is walking and is walking and is walking. And that lets me know, that lets me know here that sometimes, sometimes the, Jesus makes a way for us so that others can see the way that Jesus made and come to him as a result of seeing what he's done in our lives. They seen the transformation and said, wait a minute, you were just paralyzed. Wait a minute, your life was all jacked up. Wait a minute, I knew you this way, I knew you this way, I knew you this way. And they have you stuck, but until they see the new you that Jesus has created, the breath of life that he's breathed into you, the strength that he's given you, they all glorified God as a result of this man getting up and walking. And many of us, God has breathed new life into our situations. God has told us to rise up and walk and not be the same person that we once were. And as a result, People are, are, are wondering what's going on and they're going, coming closer to God as a result of what God is doing in our lives. So sometimes the way that Jesus makes for us is so that others can come to know him through our testimony. Through our journey, through what God has done. That's why when God makes a way, we have to give him the praise. That's why when God makes a way, we can't act like it was us. That's why when God makes a way, we can't act like it was in our strength. That's why when God does something that only God can do, we say glory be to God. Oh, glory to God. I would not have made it through had it not been for the goodness of Jesus. I would, have made, I would not have made it through had it not been for his mercy. I would not have made it through had it not been for his intervention. He made a way that, that no man could have made for me. He made a way. He made a way. He opened a door that was sealed shut. It wasn't my skill. He opened a door that was real tight, tightly closed. It wasn't because of anything that I did, but it was, it was because of God. It's a wonderful thing to serve a God that does these things for us. But when he does, do not forget to praise him. Do not forget to worship him. Do not forget to thank him. So as I close, God makes a way. He does make a way. But do not be surprised if, like the friends of the paralyzed man, he uses you to help make a way for someone else don't be surprised don't be hesitant to be used four quick points and i'm done the first is this our faith can open doors that would otherwise remain closed our faith can open doors that will otherwise remain closed having faith is what opened that door excuse me or open that roof <laughs> so that they lowered him to jesus Secondly, is our persistence can make a way out of no way. Our persistence with our faith, together, faith without works is dead. You need that works with the faith and you need that persistence. It can make a way out of no way. Third and finally, Jesus is the way for our needs to be addressed. He healed that man. He took care of his physical needs in that same way he cares about your needs. He cares about what's on your heart Jesus is the way for those needs to be addressed. And fourth and finally, Jesus is the way for our sins to be forgiven. He says, look, you rise, your son, son, your sins are forgiven. Same way he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You're not going to be uh, close to the Father. You're not going to get there unless you get it through me. He's the way for our sins to be forgiven. So if you're here and you've heard this message and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, this God that wrapped himself in flesh, that this God that said, I'm going to become like the creation so that they could be saved, so that they could be made new, so that they could be made whole. If there's anyone here, you know in your heart of hearts that you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you want to come to a relationship with him and you want to make things right again, you want to make things new. You can't do it on your own. You cannot do it in your own strength. The only way is through Jesus Christ, through accepting his sacrifice, through accepting the, 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 the sacrifice that he made on Calvary's cross to bring us close to God the Father. If that's you, if you don't know Jesus, I'm going to ask you to be honest and raise your hand. Just say, look, I'm in need of a savior. 
I'm in need of getting my life together and I know that Jesus is the only way I can do it. You're not coming to me. You're not coming to the church. You're not raising your hands for me. This is strictly for you. If you know, hey, I'm in need of a savior. I'm in need of Jesus Christ. I want to change my life, but I can't do it on my own. I need Jesus. I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. Is there anyone here? I'll be honest enough. All right, everyone standing, please. Everyone standing. Maybe you were once walking with God, but over time you begun to do your own thing and you began to uh, just live your own way. And God is calling you back today and you want to come to Jesus. Or maybe you're unsure of where you would be if you were to close your eyes in this life and open them in eternity. And you want to be sure today. You want that blessed assurance that Jesus is yours. If that's you, if you're unsure and you want to be sure of where you would go when you close your eyes in this life and open them in eternity, I'm going to ask you to remain standing while those that are sure take their seat. Is there anyone here? Anyone here that would be honest enough to say, I know I need Jesus. I know I need to change. Are you standing, my brother? Thank you so much. Thank you so much for remaining standing. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. I'll ask you to just come forward, please. Once again, man, you're not coming to me. You're not coming to the church. This is a step to, for Jesus, a step just to be sure. And I appreciate your honesty, man. I appreciate it. You coming forward. Thank you. Thank you. Let's give God praise as he comes. Thank you, Father. Thank you. You can come up. Thank you. All right. Thank you, man. Thank you. Once again, you're not coming to me or to the church. It's strictly a move for you and for Jesus. So thank you. I'm just going to pray with you, and then we'll have a brother talk to you on the side. Dear God, I just thank you so much for your son, God. I thank you for his heart. I thank you for his willingness to be open and honest and to say I'm in need of a savior. I want to change. And so I thank you for uh, just the ability to know that we know that we know that our lives are in your hands, Father. And so I pray for that blessed assurance to come his way. I pray that as he's uh, spoken to and prayed for, that you would minister to him and that you would continue to, uh, to protect him from the hand of the enemy that would try to sift him as wheat, God. I pray that you would uh, just continue to encourage him and keep him, Father. And we thank you and praise you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you. Let's give God praise. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so very quickly, we've come to the point in our service uh, where it's uh, 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 our missions offering. Um, so just be prayerful in, in your giving at this time. Be prayerful. Um, if you want to give to uh, Haiti, if you're writing a check or if you get an envelope from the ushers, just write Haiti in the memo section. If you'd like to give to 100 suits, you can write uh, 100 suits in the memo section or on the other. Uh, also, if you're giving via uh, push pay on the phone, you can uh, do it that way as well and go to other and just write 100 suits and we'll know what to do with it when it comes in. Um, so once again, I'm just truly blessed and, and thankful for what the Lord is doing. I thank you uh, for listening and, and being a part of what God is doing through this Waymaker uh, series. Um, let me just pray for the offering and then we'll continue and close out. Dear God, I just thank you so much, Lord, for who you are. I thank you for uh, just this message. I thank you for your people. I thank you that you are a Waymaker. I pray for those that are giving uh, in faith. God, I pray for those that are giving to support the ministry, to support uh, 100 Suits, and to support uh, Haiti, and to support what God is doing here at Bethel. I thank you, Lord. I pray that you would bless them as they give. I pray that you would encourage them in their season, whatever season they're in, Father. I pray right now that you would do what only you can do in our lives and continue to bless us as we surrender and give to you. We thank you and praise you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you. Jehovah. Jehovah.